Hello again, and now I'm going to do, this is another one of my fairly short um, video diaries, I suppose you could call it. Because I'm just going to do a number of these, <clears throat> not very structured, I'm just going to talk about things as they occur to me. Just things that are on my mind at the moment, and things that um, other people might have asked me about. And um, <clears throat> really I just want to sort of go over some of the things I've already talked about, and talk about my own experiences and the way I've been dealing with stuff and uh, just see how we go. <coughs> now, um, <coughs> one thing that's come to mind is something that's been really a problem in my life is um, health anxiety. Now, I know anyone who's in an anxiety state has a certain degree of this anyway because, you know, they fear that the feelings they're getting, that the anxiety symptoms are symptoms of something else, not anxiety at all. And they fear there's something wrong with their heart or there's something wrong with their lungs or whatever, you know. That's the way your mind works when you're in an anxiety state. But for a lot of people, <coughs> anxiety about their health, well, hypochondria, I suppose you could call it, becomes very, very pronounced and that's certainly been the case with myself. Now, as with all fears in anxiety states, they're all magnified, they're all out of proportion, and as I said about all the other scary thoughts that come with, ang come with anxiety, they're not to be taken seriously, although that's easier said than done, I know. <clears throat> now, I, what happens with me on a day-to-day -day basis is that I kind of have a certain theme for the day, if you want to call it that. There's always something going on which I worry about. Some feeling, some ache or pain, some sensation, or, you know, it can be anything. Um, in a sensitized state, I could say, you get, when you get anything like that, your reaction to it can be something very simple. You, um, you overreact and you start to think it's something serious and something, you know, just stupid thoughts you have about it. And I get this all the time and every day, like I said, it's something different. Or sometimes it's the same thing for several days in, in a row. Now, <clears throat> obviously this it's a case where it depends on what else you've got going on in your life. If you're trying to do a job or studying or whatever, then you perhaps get chances where you get a respite from this kind of thinking. And but with myself, I, you know, things. If I have too many days where I don't have much to do, this is when the health anxiety really, really gets a hold on me. But <clears throat> sometimes I look and I think, well. <clears throat> Some of these thoughts are just too stupid, you know, just too stupid for words. And any anything that is frightening, basically, the most frightening thing that you can think of in regard to a particular feeling you're getting or a pain or whatever, anything that evokes a lot of fear, then that is what happens. This is what, this is the way your mind works, like, um, <clears throat> Like people, you know, people who get a lot of heart palpitations think naturally they think there's something wrong with their heart. Now, I mean, it's easy enough for a doctor to tell if there's something wrong with their heart or if you have tests. That's always what people think is there's something wrong with it. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> now, <coughs> I get the most ridiculous thoughts sometimes. I just. Sometimes when I look at look back on them afterwards, I think, "What are you thinking?" You know, who thinks so, something so stupid as that? And <clears throat> like me doing this all the time, <clears throat> clearing my throat. I mean, I'm a smoker, so I've got to expect a certain amount of congestion in my lungs, and that's all it is. It's just you know all the muck that I smoke and all collects in my lungs, and that's my lungs trying to get rid of it. <clears throat> so I tend to do that a lot. But sometimes I think, oh my God, supposing it's a symptom of something else. You know, you think obviously that the worst possible things that could happen to your lungs, like anything else. You know, it's always the worst thing. 
And sometimes these kind of thoughts, they, they really, really plague you. Um, but now, I learned in many ways how to counter these stupid thoughts by thinking, well, you've been like this for X amount of time, you've been like it for months, years, and it's basically been the same thing. So, you know, if it was anything serious, you'd be dead by now, basically. That's the way I look at it. And, you know, it's, um, it's easier said than done to, to try and reason. Sometimes you can't reason with them because the feelings are so overwhelming. But, I don't know, sometimes it's just, it makes even me amazed. Even I'm amazed at some of the stupid things that my mind can come up with. Like, for example, if I get a, a sudden pain in my leg, for example, or just probably just a muscular cramp of some kind, I think, oh my God, I've got a blood clot, or something like that. <clears throat> I get some abdominal, abdominal cramps, you know, sort of bloated, uncomfortable, colicky feeling in my, in my bowels. And I think, oh God, supposing that's something bad, supposing I've got some blockage there, supposing something aw else awful is going on there. And again, I think, well, <clears throat> again, that, that's something I've had for so long, and so many years on and off, and it's not new. <clears throat> and, you know, and so it goes on. <clears throat> Occasionally, with this, um, with the way symptoms shift around, I get subtle variations and that's sometimes what scares me. I, I talk a lot about this dizzy, light-headed feeling I get. Now occasionally, it, um, what happens, it happened a bit today, it happened a couple of weeks ago. If I bend my head forward too much and I look down, it's like things are starting to revolve, like a very kind of slow vertigo, if you like. And a couple of weeks ago when I had it real bad, it kind of did freak me out a bit because I thought, oh God, what's happening now? It's basically the same symptoms as I, symptom as I get the rest of the time and it's just subtly different in some way. <clears throat> and that's another clever trick of, you know, of your mind and it's a clever trick of your nervous system. And going back to what I said on the last video about your nervous system being intelligent and trying to get you out of the fear symptoms by taking you through them and taking you through them enough time so that you start to lose your fear of them. This is all part of the same game as far as I'm concerned. Your nervous system is just, well, I suppose you could say it's testing you. It's just giving you opportunities to lose your fear of stuff. So you finally get to a point of complete acceptance of whatever is going on. And then <clears throat> when you reach that point, you're free of it. Now, <clears throat> another thing, people have, some people have come to me and talked about um, really intense, intense feelings of fear or rather are unusual or rare ones. And, and they've crossed quite reasonably, you know, how am I supposed to accept these intense feelings? Now, for example, there's, there's fainting, which is, is quite rare, surprisingly rare in nervous illness and, and anxiety, because it's a different part of your nervous system that produces it. <clears throat> if you've um, read a bit about it from Dr. Weeks, from, from what I've described in these videos, you know that there's the sympathetic and the parasympathetic, two divisions of your nervous system that kind of balance each other. And occasionally, <clears throat> although most of the work is done by the sympathetic, all the stuff that we're, we have day to day, sometimes the parasympathetic acts in an exaggerated way. And this is what happens when people who faint. <clears throat> it's the parasympathetic causes your blood pressure in these people to drop suddenly. And that's why they lose consciousness. Now, <clears throat> I've seen this, I've seen this with my daughter when she was young when she was at school and growing up. This happened to her a few times and we had a doctor to her one time and he called it a vasovagal attack, which is what I said, basically it's um, the blood pressure drops and 
I remember also that she used to, she didn't completely go out cold, she used to be sort of semi-conscious. And she used to sweat profusely, she used to shake, she used to, sometimes she used to be sick, she used to vomit with it as well. And it's still another anxious reaction. And with her, it used to be a reaction to any, when the discussion, when this happened at school a couple of times, if the conversation was talking about blood or anything connected with blood, that's what did it with her. Or if it was some health issue, such as she had, one time she had a ear trouble and a throat trouble, and um, she was upset about that, and you know the implications of what that might mean. And um, <clears throat> in her case, she it used to upset her when it happened, but she never, thankfully, she never got herself into an anxiety cycle over it. Now. It's, um, this is what the problem is. It's, it's not so much the symptom, it's the state of your mind and body that determines how you, how you cope with these rare symptoms and how, how the rare symptoms themselves develop. If you are in a situation where, which is conducive to having the strongest possible symptoms, my, my, my camera is starting to move there. Um, <clears throat> then, of course, they're going to be more frequent and they're going to be more intense. I've had people say this to me about panic attacks, saying that they're, they are extreme. Now, I know what extreme panic attacks can feel like. I've had them myself. But it's all to do <clears throat> with the, um, your state of mind and body, if you're in a sensitized state, then any symptom you get is going to come easily and it's going to, going to come intensely. And it's dealing with that sensitized state that's the issue here, not dealing with any specific symptom. And Claire Weeks, talking about fainting, Claire Weeks herself used to faint, she, she said so in her books. And she, in her view, fainting, should be treated as any other symptom. Now, that's, that's easy enough to say, of course it is. I mean, if you're subject to these all the time, it, of course it's going to be very upsetting, very hard to, to adopt that kind of acceptance approach to something like that, as it is with very intense panic attacks. But ultimately, that is all you can do, isn't it? If, unless you can find some miracle cure, some medication or some sort of treatment that can kind of block the effects of such symptoms, then sooner or later you're going to have to come to terms with them in your life. And I know that sounds awfully, well it sounds kind of callous saying that, but that's really what it's all about. Um, it's another example, not related to anxiety specifically, but my daughter's partner suffers from epilepsy. And uh, 10 years ago, he had a very severe fit that very nearly killed him because it was so bad. It took him months to get over it. Now, he, he has to live with it. He takes medication for it. Um, and as far as I can tell with him, he doesn't, he kind of accepts it philosophically. He doesn't dwell on it or brood over it or worry about it. He understands what it is. He understands what he needs to do to minimize the threat of it. But he doesn't, he puts it alongside the rest of his life. So he doesn't become, he doesn't get caught in an anxiety cycle about it. And I think, well, that's, you know, that's the trick, isn't it? That's, that's what you need to do. I often, I think and wonder, I think, well, would I be able to be as philosophical about that as he is, about, you know, about his condition? I think, well, I've had to be like that with my stroke, because in my early months after I had a stroke, I was given all these dire predictions about, from doctors about what could happen, another, I could get another one, it could be even worse, blah, blah, blah. 
And I began to dwell on it. I began to brood about it and worry about it, which was totally counterproductive because that was not, wasn't going to help my blood pressure or anything else. But as time has gone on, I've thought, well, okay, there's still that threat there. Of course there is. But what can I do? I have to adapt my life to it. I, I made changes to my life um, as a result of it. And I've done things to kind of lower the risk. So in other words, I've basically had to accept that it happened to me and accept the possibility, the possibility that it could happen again. But, it, you know, I can't run my life around it. I can't um, spend all my time thinking about it. I, I've gradually come used to the idea that it actually happened and that it might happen again. And therefore not to get so um, obsessed with worry about it. I've become much more philosophical about it. And it takes time to get to that point. I do occasionally get, you know, upset when I, especially when things like bad dizziness happen I think oh god supposing it's that again supposing something else has happened but then I get oh, I thought well I survived the first one you know people do it's like people have heart attacks they can have loads of heart attacks and still come out the other side so what's the point of dwelling on them <clears throat> anyway health anxiety yes I mean it's just, it's helpful to understand what was actually happening. You know, it's just another manifestation of exaggerated, sensitized reaction. And the thoughts that you get, the frightening thoughts you get with health anxiety is just, well, it's just like any other frightening thought. You can't take these thoughts seriously. These thoughts don't know anything. They're just speculating, if you want to call it that. They're not telling you anything that's useful. They're no different from any other scary thoughts you might have. It's just they happen to be focused on a particular area. So, as you know, as I make my way towards my own recovery, I try and give less and less importance to these thoughts. I realize because I've had so much, so many for so long. I think oh, I can't be bothered with this. I'm just fed up with it. I'm not going to, you know waste my time trying to work out why these thoughts are there. And this is that acceptance approach. This is just, you know, being prepared to have this stuff happen and knowing at the same time that it's not a permanent state of affairs. These frightening thoughts do go. If you treat them the right way, they go. Same as the physical symptoms go. And this is what I don't think I stress this enough, is that you don't have to think you're kind of sentenced to suffer in this way indefinitely because this method of recovery is a, a definite process. It's doing the opposite of what you did to get like this in the first place. But as it took a while to get like this in the first place, it's going to take a while to get out of it again. Nothing is permanent in this um, in this situation. Nothing is permanent. It's think of it as temporary. It's transient. It's something that will pass, and you can encourage its passing by your approach to it. And it's these kind of thoughts I tell myself again and again because I've had so many years of it of my life. Well, you could almost say lost to this illness. But on the other hand, it's been experienced that, um, you know, I've learned so much about the subject and I'm, this is what I'm trying to do with these videos, just to pass on things that I've learned and the hope that they will help other people in the same boat. And I really love doing this because this is, um, it's helping people, I hope it's helping people. It's making them see things from a different point of view. And when you're in an anxiety state, seeing things from a different point of view can sometimes be very, very hard because you're stuck thinking the same way. Um, so 
that's just kind of the thoughts for today. Just to think that this is just temporary. All of it is temporary. It's a, a healing. A healing is taking place of your sensitized nervous system. And sensitized nerves do heal. They calm down. And all these gross and intense feelings that you keep getting, they die down too. So, um, I better not go on too long because I, I don't want to make these videos too long. But just always keep that in your mind that this is temporary. And that encourages you to try to use this approach more often, this is set acceptance approach more often. When you think of it as just a temporary state that you've gotten into, even if you might <clears throat> have suffered from it for years like I have, it is still temporary. It's not it's not irrevocable. It's not something that can't be made better. And that's that's a good thought, isn't it? So um, anyway, I don't think I need to talk much further on that. I'll, I'll um I do lots more of these shortish videos because there's any number of different topics I could talk about again that I've already talked about, and um, just try and clarify some of these concepts a bit more and try and give you examples. I like to give examples just to show how I've used these principles myself. And hopefully this is, these things will help you and you can build your own experience of using this method. And when you finally, when you start to see how this actually works, when you notice the difference in yourself, when you notice how symptoms start to quieten down, when you adopt this passive approach to them, then you're encouraged to do it some more and you, you start to go and do things that you previously avoided because you were too frightened or because the symptoms were too bad. And this is what it's all about. It's like I said in my last video, it's going and doing the things you think you can't. It's going to the places you fear, doing the things you fear. And that's, um, that's what takes you out of it. So, anyway, before I <clears throat> go off completely at a tangent and start waffling like I always do, I'll leave it at that for now, and uh, I'll, do, I'll do some more soon. But if there's anything, any topic that you want me to talk about, and if I've, I've got some knowledge and experience of it, then I certainly will. Please do let me know, because I'd be happy to do that. Or if you just want to contact me, email me, or whatever. I'm always happy to help. This is why I like, I like to do this. I like to help people, and this is why I'm doing all this stuff. Anyway, for now, that's enough, I think, and uh, I'll catch you on the next recording.